But we are going to begin this hour with the conflict in the Middle East. Israel's military says it killed dozens of terrorists during overnight clashes in Gaza as the country warns its offensive in the, in the enclave will escalate. Israel's defense forces say they've struck over 600 militant targets in the past few days. Palestinian media reports Israeli airstrikes are hitting areas close to hospitals in Gaza where thousands have sought shelter. And this comes amid fears the fighting could spark a wider regional conflict. Overnight, Israel's military says one of its aircraft hit military infrastructure in Syria in response to rocket fire. So joining me now with more from Israel is CBS News foreign correspondent Ian Lee. Uh, Ian, what's the latest this hour? And good morning, Amory. It does seem like that ground invasion is now underway. We were down on the Gaza border over the weekend, and we could see airstrikes and artillery and hear machine gun fire. Now, over the past few days, Israel military says that it is going after weapons depots, anti-tank missile launching positions, as well as hideouts and staging grounds used by Hamas. It's believed that the Israeli military has pushed to the outskirts of Gaza City, but they're making slow progress as they've encountered resistance, as well as confirmed confronting that vast tunnel network. But the humanitarian situation is just growing more dire in Gaza. The UN is saying civil order is starting to break down. Thousands of people recently broke into warehouses, taking flour and medical supplies. Egypt says dozens of trucks entered Gaza, but, you know, it's just not enough. What's holding out more aid getting in, and, and there's a lot waiting, is the security screening that officials say is required before it's allowed to move from Egypt into Gaza. It's also being reported that later today, the UAE will seek a binding resolution at the UN Security Council for an immediate humanitarian pause to the fighting in Gaza. But meanwhile, overnight, Israeli jets hit a number of in southern Syria. This is a response to rocket fire at the Golan Heights. Now, Syria State TV says two army posts were hit and that there was some material loss. But the IDF also says they are striking Hezbollah and Lebanon. Uh, this comes as Iran's president said this weekend that Israel's crimes have crossed the red line and that that may force everyone to take action. Amory? Very concerning. Ian Lee in Tel Aviv, thank you very much, uh, Ian. So for more, I want to bring in national security uh, correspondent uh, David Martin. Uh, he's following the latest on Israel's ground offensive. David, it's always good to see you. Um, the national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, joined Margaret Bren Brennan on Face the Nation Sunday, and he spoke about Israel's responsibility to prioritize the safety of Palestinian civilians in this next phase of their offensive. I want to play some of that sound. Hamas is using civilians as human shields. They're hiding behind civilians. They're hiding among civilians. They're putting rockets and other terrorist infrastructure in civilian areas. That creates an added burden for the Israeli Defense Forces, but it does not lessen their responsibility to distinguish between terrorists and innocent civilians and to protect the lives of innocent civilians as they conduct this military operation. Uh, this is certainly a conundrum. Um, civilians are always, um, you know, sort of part of what they call in the uh, sort of collateral damage when they call when they talk about the rules of war. But how concerned <laughs> is the Biden administration about potential reper repercussions of a full ground invasion in which no doubt you will see many civilians suffer? Well, first, there's the basic concern for innocent human life. Um, and uh, that includes uh, both the civilians trapped in Gaza and it includes the hostages uh, being held uh, by Hamas. And there are Americans among the hostages and there are Americans among the civilians trapped in Gaza. Beyond that, there is a great concern that the images of uh, human suffering that uh, we see coming from Gaza will uh, so inflame uh, the Muslim world that it will drive other parties to uh, join in this war against Israel. And the most immediate concern is uh, the Hezbollah terrorist group, uh, which is based in Lebanon and has uh, been shelling uh, northern Israel, uh, but really hasn't unleashed its uh, full arsenal of rockets and missiles yet. Mm. If, if Hezbollah feels compelled to enter the war, that will make this a true two-front war, which will greatly complicate mm. uh, the defense of Israel. And there is great concern of further attacks against American troops based in Iraq and Syria, because, of course, 
the United States is seen as a partner uh, with Israel uh, in its war against Hamas, and, and the United States is going to get blamed, at least in uh, Muslim minds, uh, for uh, what is happening in, uh, in Gaza. You're sort of almost bringing me to my next question, because obviously there is a concern about this war escalating and spreading beyond the borders of um, Gaza. We do know that U.S. fighter jets hit Iran-linked sites in Syria. Here's what Vice President Kamala Harris had to say about that on CBS's 60 Minutes. And what's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. So, David, is that the message being received? Do you think the airstrikes and the deployment of the air carriers are going to be enough to deter, um, you know, or could they potentially, you know, have the opposite effect? Could they agitate? Well, what we know is that uh, since those airstrikes on Thursday night, uh, there have been two more confirmed uh, attacks on American troop locations, one in Syria, one in Iraq. Uh, we uh, have no reports of casualties or damages from either of those attacks. And that is uh, a lesser rate of attacks than, uh, than before the strike. But um, if they continue, uh, sooner or later, uh, somebody's going to get hurt. And uh, sooner or later, the number is just going to add up to the point where uh, the Biden administration has to decide that, you know, you just can't let uh, people take free shots at American troops and they will have to uh, respond again. And of course, every time you respond, you risk uh, exactly what uh, President Biden is trying to avoid which is a larger Middle East war. Mm.